Hi, I'm Amber Bazaar, the head of digital design at Vancouver Film School. Today, I'm joined by a very dear friend and former colleague, Peter Jin Hong. He's currently a user experience designer at Google Plus Photos, and he's also an alumnus of the program, having graduated in 1996. Peter's been with us all week as a visiting artist in resident, inspiring students, mentoring them, and just giving back. So tell me a little bit more about what you're doing at Google Plus Photos, please. Um, I've been at Google for almost five years now, and um, Google Plus is creating a bit of a stir in the marketplace. It's because it's an approach to trying to connect people more with one another. And it was really, really thrilling for me personally because they recognized that understanding how people feel, um, how people want to communicate with one another was key. So more than many other initiatives at Google, we were designing experiences that, that were human. And Google being a, an engineer-centric company really cared about effectiveness and efficiency and trying to interpret human needs on that level. Uh, but Google Plus was trying to interpret needs on the relationship level. And that really allowed me to get back into um, actually building a user experience team there and encouraging the user experience team to think about the things that we've been talking all week with the students, mm -hmm. to think about your personal experiences, to think about the stories, to think about life and how that's inspired you. How do you retell a story through a sequence of photos? Um, how do you preserve the romantic aspect of looking through a camera and like you see that thing come into focus? Or if you actually have a stack of photos and like you're flipping through them, you pause on one and you show someone and you're, you start to get excited, other people join in. And so how do you create environments that let you yeah. do that? That's what we're uh, taking on right now at Google Plus. So for those of us who don't know what user experience is, mm -hmm. can you maybe provide your definition? Um, I think um, whenever we have tools that we don't understand, um, it can be very frustrating. And so there's a big component of usability and user experience, which is, I don't know how to make this work. Uh, it still drives me nuts when I go to a door and it's got a handle, so I <laughs> pull. But, um, You're meant to push. You're meant to push. <laughs> and user experience would say, how do we make that experience better for a person? Mm -hmm. And so the user experience for a door designer would be, say, you put a flat panel on that door, so like there's nothing to hold, you just push. So that's a very simple way of defining what technology uh, needs in terms of a guide. And when, you're, when we're dealing with complex interfaces, there's ways to make that simpler. There's ways to make it more natural. But when things start to feel natural, they disappear. And some of the best experiences are when you hardly notice that they're there and all you're left with is just a great experience in your life. Um, so if we can do that, we're actually creating magic. I really admire the work you and the team at welldone.org are doing mm, and yeah. uh, you recently had a really amazing trip. Can you tell us how you got involved and yeah. what you're doing? And uh, with Well Done, uh, their goal was to create more awareness around water. And when we were in Africa, they had partners on the ground that actually were involved with well digging. And um, a well could basically provide a community of 200 people fresh water. So when I attended the brainstorm, I encouraged them to actually just share what they were inspired by. The movies that inspired us, the shows that inspired us, places that inspired us. And we realized, you know, we get inundated with messages here from nonprofits mm -hmm. saying, you know, you need to look at water programs because this many people are dying, kids, uh, kids have dysentery, you know, girls can't go to school because they have to get water. It's like all this negative Such messaging. Such a negative perspective. Exactly. Yeah. And what we saw was life was hard there. but because life was hard, they were willing to work harder and they were willing to celebrate harder. And when we had that work presented in the campaigns that we did, we it accelerated the amount of funding. And we call it funding because we actually stripped the word donation off the site because you're not feeling sorry for anyone. You're joining a party. So you don't donate to a party. And like you said, it has the word fun it, in funding. Fun has the word fun in it. <laughs> it does. Speaking of community, you were back this week as an artist in residence. Mm -hmm. So what's that been like? What have you been up to? Working with the students has been amazing, um, primarily because it, it took me back to what I experienced when I first came to VFS. The experimentation that was happening in the classrooms, like we as students were teaching each other, we were experimenting, pushing everything that was possible. And then just having access to that equipment and having access to people in the industry. And that's why all week I've been encouraging the students, students to actually 
live a little, <laughs> perhaps live a lot. I remember sitting with uh, just the second term class and I, seeing some of the work, I was like, they're only in their second term. <laughs> this is what I expect from someone who's going to apply at a design studio right now. In the hallways of Google, you'll hear all the, all the leaders talking about how do we make experiences more magical? How do we get those magical moments? And user experience is one of those areas that's making a critical difference. One of the reasons I chose the program way back, and I understand it's structured the way it is, is the brevity of the program. And that culture of learning and that culture of sharing is how you survive and how you excel once you get into um, the actual field.